Good morning church and welcome to another Sunday service from my shed again. It's a little bit wet outside and a little bit windy so I've come indoors. So you're not seeing my garden this morning. But we just want to give you a warm welcome if it's your first time. Then welcome to Calvary Church. We are a friendly church that is outreaching in the community. And we'd love you to join us after the lockdown. And certainly stay with us through this service. So this morning we've got plenty of things coming up. We've got Yindra is going to lead us in communion after the worship. So please, I encourage you to get your glass of wine and your bread and join in the the communion together even though we can't physically be together we can be together spiritually so this morning i just feel really old you know when you wake up one morning and suddenly think you're really old and the reason is my son joshua is 21 today so in the chat say hi and wish him a happy birthday it really encouraged him Fancy having your 21st birthday in lockdown. He can't go out. He's going, he planned to go out with his mates uh, and having a fun time. But he's got to stay with his mum and dad all day. So feel sorry for him because it's his 21st. It's a big one. But it makes me feel really old that I've got a son now who is 21. Oof, that's terrible. But anyway, I just want to bless you and start to open the service with prayer so let us pray lord jesus i just thank you for this opportunity of coming together through wonderful technology lord we thank you that you are in front of us you go before us you prepare the way you give us a destiny and a purpose and a calling in our lives and lord we just pray right now that you'll just bless everything that is said and done lord i pray through the worship through communion through the word and through everything that we do lord and even through the chat i pray that your will will be done so lord i pray for a great blessing in the name of jesus i ask so now we're going to have a time of worship with Birthday Boy, and then we'll go into communion after that. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love, oh, shame no longer has a place to hide. And I'm not a captive to the lies Oh, I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love There's power that can break off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name There's power that can break off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name My fear doesn't stand a chance when I 
stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance morning church. I hope you all had a wonderful week and many blessings in it. It's always good to reflect upon these times to know that God is for us, that God is our great Father who just not only blesses us but blesses us abundantly, richly beyond our every imagination and it's all good to come together to give thanks to remember what God has done for us on that cross. And in the memory of it all and the remembrance, we take bread and wine together. So come along, sit with me, and come with attitude of gratitude. Let our hearts be overflowing with the thanks what he has done and remember what he what has been done on the cross. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So let's take that bread and remember, this is Jesus' body. Thank you, Lord. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. So we remember that, Lord, that that blood of the covenant was shed for us and for me. And I thank you, Lord. And I really come with a great gratitude of remembering what you've done for us. Amen. This morning I just want to do something slightly different. I want to honour somebody in our kids' corner. So the competition this week is this. We're going to talk a bit a bit about disabilities and that God's still got a calling and a purpose and a destiny for you, even though you may have some kind of disability or some kind of issue God's still got a plan and a purpose for you kids and it's important to accept everybody as they are because God's given them the ability and calling to do the things they want to do. So first up for the sweets this week you need to name all three characters in the Bible because there's many people in the Bible who had a disability of some sort or other. So the first one is who in the Bible had a stutter? In fact, it was so bad that he had to get his brother to speak the words of God through him. So who in the Bible had a stutter? So that's number one. Number two, someone had a fight and then actually started to limp. God touched his hip because he wanted a blessing and suddenly he was limping. Who was that? And the third one is something we don't quite know what the thorn was. But who walked around with a thorn in his side. And in fact, the Bible said he asked three times for this thorn to be taken away, this ailment, whatever that was, whether it was his eyesight, whether that was 
uh, his blindness, whether that whatever it was, God asked him, uh, he asked three times to be taken away. But God never did it. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, I make you strong. So who is that character? There's three characters there. First one, send it in. Jack and Bailey, if you're going to do it, text it me because sometimes you're ahead of everybody else. But that's fine. So text, text, write it in. Whoever gets it gets the sw sweets when we come back. Well, this is all started from I bumped into my mate, Jay, Johnny. The first time I ever met Johnny was actually at an Easter service. I was leading an Easter service and all the kids were lining up to get an Easter egg. And each child had to do, perform something, either a song, a joke, or something they had to perform. So Jay joined the queue and he came along to me and he came up to me wanting this egg, but I thought, no, you've got to perform something to me. I'm not going to treat you any different than anybody else. And we shouldn't treat people different. We should just realise where they are. So what did Jay do? He did his famous Scooby-Doo impression. And it tickled me and it made me laugh. And ever since then, we have been best of mates. Even so, he came and he used to sit right next to me every Sunday, on my next to me at the front. And then all of a sudden, a young blonde lady came into church named Sally. And he used to sit next to Sally and not me. I feel so rejected. But I want to say this morning that God has got a calling, a purpose and a destiny for every single one of you. And we've been going through the last few weeks about we need to scatter, we need to grow, we need to bear fruit and we need to reproduce what we are. And actually, Jay is fulfilling all those things. And it encourages me to see him fulfilling the things that he has. God has got a purpose for Johnny, he's got a calling for Johnny, and he's also got a destiny for Johnny. Now, Johnny, I would call his calling is an encourager. And it doesn't matter what type of service uh, sermon I've preached, whether it's been the most terrible sermon ever. I have people in the congregation at times falling asleep on me, on the front row. You know who you are. And... But Jay, every single time, will come up to me, shake my hand and say, well done, Gary. Doesn't matter whether it's good, bad or indifference, Jay is an encourager. So that's his fruit, that's his purpose in life. He's a great encourager. And he goes round the people and he will encourage you. He, the people who've said a prayer, he would tell you, well done. And we all need to be a little bit more like Johnny at times with that lovely smile that he has and encourage one another. So kids, I want to challenge you to encourage those that are around you. Just like Jay is a great encourager. Yes, we all know he takes us to the calendar and he tells us what's the next destiny, but he is somebody who encourages. That's his gifting and he's learned to let make that grow. So much so that we can see whoever touches him, he will encourage you. But also, he reproduces that encouragement in himself into you. And the amazing thing is that he says, well done, Gary. That I automatically then, because he's encouraged me, I encourage somebody else. So he's reproducing what he's sown, what he's thrown out into me, into somebody else. And we all need to be a little bit more like that. We all need to have that encouraging spirit within us. So I just want to encourage you. You want to see what is in my heart, what encourages me. Well, I've just got a little, two little clips from Johnny. And it's blessed me so much this week. You know, as a pastor, so many times we get so many beats up and we get scars on our hearts. And sometimes we have to carry the pain of other people's burdens upon us. But Johnny is someone that encourages you. And if you want to know what encourages me is when people are starting to grow into who they are meant to be, are fulfilling their purpose in life. And Johnny does that. He's got a purpose in our church. He's a great encourager. He even works in the kitchen sometimes. He tidies up. He's fulfilling the purpose that God has called him to be. That calling that is on his life, that he is that encourager. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a stranger who's never seen you, he will still shake your hand and welcome you in. He's that type of guy and he has a destiny 
God has called him to our church for this time to encourage everybody else. And he is fulfilling that far more than any others of us are, are fulfilling the calling that we has done and within us. So this morning I just want you to be blessed with Johnny worshipping. Now it might not be the best singing. He's, he's as good as me at singing. But what he's singing is singing from the heart. And when God hears that, he hears that sweet, sweet sound in his ear. It doesn't matter how bad you are at singing or how good you are at singing. It's all about coming from the heart. And these next two clips, he hasn't done it to show off with anybody or anything like that. He's singing from the heart. Over to you, Johnny. <laughs> to our church he's come in with a humble heart but he is that apostleship spirit that if you've read in the bible he's fulfilling all the duties of an apostle so it's with great pleasure and a great honor that he's prepared a word in season for us so i encourage you to listen to what god has to say because it might be just be one sentence it might be one word of what he says but it can challenge you it can impact you in a special way so a big thank you victor over to you praise god for this sunday service uh this is another day that the lord has made and the lord is good all the time and all the time god is good i like to share with us the word that god has given to me for this season in line with uh, the vision that God has given to the church concerning growth, uh, scattering of seed, planting it, nurturing it, ensuring that it grows and it can continue to bear fruit. And so I want to go in that dimension today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this Sunday service. I ask the Lord you will speak to us, bear your mind to us, and show forth your counsel uh, to us concerning the vision of Calvary Church, Marcusfield. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, for anything that God will do, God will always have a man to use. When we're talking of um, scattering of seed, it has to be with man. If you remember the parable of the sower, the sower went to sow. However, anyone that God will use for this purpose, uh, there are certain things uh, that must go with the work of seed sowing, planting the seed, and the nurturing it and to ensure that uh, it reproduces. The number one thing is in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1 and verse number 8, Daniel 1 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart 
that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. The first thing there is purpose. Any man that God will use for seed, to scatter the seed of evangelism wherever God will put him, must be a man of purpose. You must um, propose or determine within you that you will do the work of scattering of seed, regardless of whatever may want to deter you, whatever may want to discourage you, whatever may want to stand on your way. Daniel proposed in his heart. Daniel determined what he would do. He will not allow anything to dissuade him or to uh, persuade him otherwise. And that is the first thing in the area of scattering of seed of evangelism. If we are going to reach out to the people in Marcus Field and beyond, we must propose within us that this is what we want to do and then to ensure that we go about it because it is your purpose for God that made God to have a purpose for you. In other words, if you determine to do the mind of God, to do the purpose of God, to do the things of God, then God will also make room for you. God will go along with you he will cooperate with you and ensure that what you have proposed in your mind to do will be done. Amen. Now, the second thing is to be a man of purity because in that verse number eight, you will see that Daniel proposed in himself that he will not defile himself. Anyone that God will use for a scattering of seed or to carry out the mission or purpose of evangelism must be a man of purity. He must be pure in heart, pure in everything that he does. In Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 to 21, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. There's a lot there. A man that God will use, you know, to scatter the seed of evangelism for souls to come in to the kingdom must be a man of purity. It is clearly spelled out. There are different vessels in the house, but the vessel that God will use must be a pure vessel of gold and of silver and of honor, of gold, of silver and of honor. In other words, such a vessel must have gone through a process. The Lord must have processed that vessel. We all know that before you will appreciate gold, it must have gone through a purpose, going through the fire and removing all the dross also for, the, uh, for silver as well. And it must be a vessel of honor, a man of honor, a woman of honor that God can, you know, uh, use for the purpose of evangelism. Also, that vessel or man that is carrying the seed must have purged himself from everything that can defile, must have purged himself from everything 
that can make him impure in whatever way and then um, to be a vessel that is set apart that is the word sanctification that is set apart for the master's use and prepared unto every good work i like that prepared unto every good work and which is to say that god must have gone through that vessel to ensure that that vessel is prepared all forms of impurity has been removed from that vessel and is ready to be used of the lord you know uh, to scatter seed all over the place that is very very important um in psalm 66 verse 18 psalm 66 verse 18 the psalmist said if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me psalm 66 and verse number 18 if i regard in iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me our heart is important to the work our heart is important you know to the seed that you want to disperse so that there will be no contamination he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god so which means our heart must be pure as much as the seed is pure so that there will be no um, no contamination of any sort this is very very important into the work that god has called us to do in first corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 16 paul has this to say first corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 16 what know ye not that he which is joined on her lot is one body for two saith he shall be one flesh and then in verse 19 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are gods so which means our body is very important into the work of evangelism into the work of reaching out to souls into the work of reaching out to people in our community or wherever we may find ourselves to ensure that there is purity of heart there is purity of our soul there is purity of our body so that the lord can find um, a desire in us to use us to reach out to people wherever we find ourselves the man that we do this work of scattering of seed of planting it wherever and also of nurturing it to make sure that it brings forth fruit that it can continue to reproduce itself must be a man of principle you find that again in that daniel chapter 1 verse 8 daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat nor with the king's wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself that is a man of principle whatever you would do there's the need for you you know to be principled with it um hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 hebrews chapter 11 and then verse number 6 said for without faith it is impossible to please god for he that must come to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him that diligently seek him to be diligent you have to be principled with it you have to be determined with it and you have to uh, ensure that you do not allow anything to deter you in whatever you are doing on a regular basis okay you ensure that uh, no matter what you are doing you are principled 
even if it's going to uh, bring danger, it will go by uh, the principle of what God has committed into your hands. Because it is a man that is diligent in his ways. He says, see it, a man that is diligent in his ways, he will not stand before mean men, but he will stand before the king. So this requires that we are disciplined, we are determined, we are diligent in what God has given us to do, and we are determined to do it all the way without allowing anybody to distract us. Any man that God will use to scatter the seed of the world must be a man that follows instruction. Must be a man that follows instruction. Proverbs uh, chapter 3 and verse number 6. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 6. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. And that has to do with our connection with the Holy Spirit. Hearing instruction, taking instruction from him from time to time. Telling us what to do. Okay? You may go to this particular street today. He may give you instruction to go to another place another day. Or he may tell you to remain on the same street because he's waiting for a soul that has been prepared to sow the seed of the word and to see that as the seed is planted, it is nurtured to growth that uh, it can you know, take root in the word and begin to reproduce itself. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21, he said, Thy ears, Isaiah 30 and verse 21, Thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. This is an important instruction, which means we put our ears to the heart of the Holy Spirit to hear what he will say, the instruction that he will give to us at any point in time so that we can know what to do per time. I love the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 8, there was a revival that was going on and God spoke to Philip the evangelist to leave that place of revival and go into the desert just to go and meet one man. That is instruction. Just to go and meet one man. And there he began to speak to him, you know, uh, from the book of Isaiah. From the book of Isaiah. And God touched that man and he got born again. So it was in the middle of the revival that was going on in Samaria that God spoke unto Philip the evangelist to go and join um, the exchequer of Candice, the minister of finance, and just one man, but it takes the leading of the Holy Spirit to speak to him and to go and join him um, in, the, uh, in the desert. In verse 26, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord speak unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south, unto the way that went down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he followed that instruction and met a man. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia. And eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read Isaiah the prophet, 
the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to this chariot. You see, it was, you must be a man that is following instruction per time. And when he joined him, he asked him a question. Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how will I understand? Except a man will explain it to me. And from that scripture, he preached Christ to him. A heart that is prepared, a heart that is hungry, got saved that day. But it took a servant that was ready to hear the, the voice of the Lord, to hear the mind of God, and to preach the gospel at that point in time. And then he got born again. He was baptized. And then from there, God gave um, Philip another assignment to do. The last point is the man that God will use for seed dispersal to plant the seed, to nurture it to grow, to get you to reproduce yourself, you must be a man of prayer. A man of prayer. Little prayer, little result. Big prayer, big result. And that's why it said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, man ought always to pray and not to faint. Man ought always to pray and not to faint. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul was speaking to the church in that place. And he said, Verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. It is important for us, if we be involved in the work of evangelism, to continue to pray. And I thank God on our Tuesday meeting, we have a list of people that we pray for continuously. We are sowing the seed into their life through prayer, believing God that one day the Lord will harvest their soul. So as we continue to pray for our neighbors, for the people in our community, our, our, our colleagues at work, even when you're on the bus or on the train, one day the Lord will send the right laborer to harvest their soul and bring them into the kingdom. These are the things that um, we must put in, in mind or in focus for the work of evangelism and the vision that God has given to us in Calvary uh, Church. Number one, we must be a man of purpose. Number two, we must be a man of purity. Our heart must be pure. Number three, we must be a man of principle. Number four, we must be a man that is given to direction, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And number five, we must be a man of prayer. I believe God that as we go on with this vision and as we put this into place, the Lord will begin to add to us the essence of it is to see God adding to the church day by day. As the restriction is released, relaxed, I believe that the Lord will begin to bring souls into uh, our church and into other churches in Marcusfield and in United Kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you will water this word in our heart and cause it to grow and bring forth fruits as we desire in 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold, that your name alone might be glorified. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. Big thanks, Victor. I hope God's spoken to you. I hope God's challenged you, and I hope you've learned 
or listen to what God has actually got to say to you. You know, God is always speaking. It's just that we're not always listening. You know, my wife is always speaking, but I'm not always listening. In fact, it goes in one ear and comes out the other time, most of the time. So we need to tune in to what God has got to say to us. So hopefully you've tuned in to something and it will bless you this week. So just before we close, I've got a few notices coming up this week. On Monday, we've got our Bible study group, which Frankie leads. So please, if you are able to join at half past seven on Monday night, please join. If you can't join, then I encourage you to go onto our YouTube channel and the first four parts of the series are on there. So I encourage you to go on and look up and God will bless you in that study in yourself on tuesday night we have our prayer meeting at half past seven so please join us through zoom again and we'll have a great time of prayer and fellowship on thursday at half past three we have our prayer and praise meeting so please if you're free in the day then pop in and say hello on zoom and we can pray and praise what god has done throughout the week now on friday at half past seven, the ladies usually have a get together and they have a quiz time and everything like that. But this week they've challenged the men to join in. So it's going to be a, a battle of the sexes. So we're going to see who's the cleverest, who's the strongest, who's the bravest. I know the answer to that, but the women don't know. So men, I encourage you, come on, join in. Let's see and let's beat these women up. In one sense, only by competition. I don't mean physically, but let's show them what we're made of in one sense. So that's half past seven. That's through Zoom again. So please, I need as many men as I can because we could be outnumbered if not. So please, if you're free for that also. This week, we've uh, also, through Maggie and Streetwise, has hit a record. Over 300 parcels were delivered through Streetwise and they use our premises to sort the parcels out. So a big thank you to everyone who's helped out in that way. And also a big thank you out to the two, uh, two ladies who make the meals each week. Another 100 meals were made out. Some go to our neighbours and friends and most of them go out to those who are in our town who are in great need. So a big thank you for the, the enthusiasm that you do to come and bake and to see God move as we scatter these meals out. God met the needs of the people and sometimes the needs are just a, a food that they can put in the microwave and they can do. So we're just going to pray right now and then I'm going to close the meeting. We're going to have a few hellos from the people in the church and I'll close with a worship session. But don't forget to join us on Zoom after it, it after this meeting straight after we have a zoom meeting where it's just a general chit chat get a coffee and we'll you can wish joshua a happy birthday if nothing else so let's just pray jan who is yindra's dad is still critically ill in hospital but god has been so good there's been miracle after miracle and we're still praying for that miracle of him coming back home so let's just pray and i close it at the meeting and then we can go into worship so lord jesus we just thank you that you are king of kings and lord of lords lord i thank you that you have a destiny and a calling for each and every one of us lord you want us all to grow and to experience you in our lives so lord i thank you for this opportunity of sharing your word so lord i pray that you'll be with us that you'll keep us safe lord we especially pray for Jan. lord we're asking for one more miracle of him coming home lord jesus we thank you for the way that you've pulled him through lord jesus through the different operations that he's had lord that he's still here with us so lord we are praying for a full recovery that he'll be able to come back home to his family who love him and miss him lord we pray for yindra in this time that you'll give her strength and peace in her heart as she goes through this worrying time so lord i just thank you for everyone keep us safe until we meet again in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. Hi everyone. We're safe and well. Hope you are. Hope to see you all at church soon. Bye. I love you all. <laughs> love you all. Bye. Bye. Good morning everybody. Good morning Gary. Cheers. I'm going to say hello to the church.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the truth, yeah. Have you missed everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, are you ready to come back? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. A few more weeks. No, oh, so we'll we'll back, yeah, we'll just go on Yeah? Big smile then, Johnny. Yeah. Big smile. Bye, church. <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Let's have a time of worship with the two girls.